Um, I went around and I talked to a few people in the crowd before this, and uh, I asked the same question to everybody, among other things, do you believe in quality or quantity? It was kind of a trick question, and people mostly said quality. I kind of tend to agree. However, Colin said, why not both? Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Why not both? So that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, the title of my talk is Create Ugly, and what I want to do is I want to make this ridiculous debate in our industry, quality versus quantity, completely and totally meaningless, pointless. Get it out of there. So I'm Italian. It's very obvious to many people. Gel, hands, a lot of that. <laughs> this will become a very common theme throughout this session. So just buckle up for that. So because I'm Italian, there are two things in the world that are more important to me than literally anything, family and food. And at the intersection of those two things is one dish that every Italian-American household cherishes. It's the most sacred thing. The overlap of family and food in an Italian household is one special dish. Can anyone guess what that is? Pasta. The sauce. Someone said it. The sauce. The sauce. It is the most special thing. My mom makes the best sauce on earth. If you don't believe me, meet me outside. We'll have a debate, and it will, I will not stop until you just get tired. My mom makes the best sauce on the planet. And every Italian would tell you that it's their mom. It's really my mom. So I remember in college, I, uh, I lived in this off-campus apartment. I had a bunch of roommates, about six at the time. And every time my mom came to visit, she'd bring a cooler of food. And in that food, among other things, was the sauce. She'd bring like frozen containers of the sauce for us to eat. It was awesome. My roommates would creep up the stairs behind my mom because they knew there was some food in that cooler. And they were going to like kind of steal it from me, or we were going to share it. And uh, one weekend, I went away visiting some friends off campus. And I turned to my roommate that shared the same floor as me, and I said, Tim, I'm going to be gone for the weekend. There's some sauce left in the fridge. Why don't you go ahead and finish it? And I left. When I came back, I noticed that there was a pan on the stove, and it had some like red, crusty stuff around the edges. And I was like, oh, great, Tim finished it. And I looked inside, and at the bottom, there was this like orange, gloppy, gooey, like alien substance like caked around the bottom. And I said, Tim, did you, did you do something to my mom's sauce? And he goes, oh, yeah, like, I needed more of it. And so I just melted in some Velveeta cheese. <laughs> they never did find Tim's body. But my point is, in anything human beings do, marketing, otherwise, cooking, we all want more stuff, right? And what we want to do to get more stuff is we want to take shortcuts. Now, some shortcuts are fine. They're good. They land you in a better place. Most shortcuts, most hacks are bad. Tim's was bad. <laughs> Don't be like Tim, OK? But what I want to talk about today are the few people in the world that are able to do these things, quality and quantity, a lot, right? They say this is something quality, sauce or otherwise, content. And they can do it in high volumes, right? They don't have this weird debate that we make out in our industry to be a conflict. Um, you, you heard a little background on me, so I'll just skip through the bio. But if you want to hear some more of my Italian-ness come through in my writing, just go to sorryformarketing.com. That's my personal blog. I have a treat for you at the end that links to that blog. Um, and what I want to talk about today are, again, those people that make this debate completely meaningless. And they do exist. And I've been studying them for a few years now. And, and I'm, I'm hoping to inspire you to start behaving like them. There's a lot of knowledge around creating content. And it's really hard to condense it into a 40-minute talk. So if nothing else, I just want to get you guys heading down the right path. And then afterwards, we can talk tactics and tools and things like that. So I want to start with a little game. Hopefully, you'll participate here. Let's do, do a game of opposites. Uh, what is the opposite of up? Just shout it out. Yeah. Down. Great. What is the opposite of in? Out. No trick questions here. What is the opposite of a working clicker? <laughs> what is the opposite of hot? Cold. What is the opposite of quality? It's not quantity. Crap, yes. Yes, absolutely. Someone said crap. They, who said that, by the way? Thank you. Uh, it's not quantity. I was an English lit major, and we learned about words, and I'm pretty sure I never learned that the opposite of quality is quantity. And there are people in the world that if you ask quality or quantity, they just say, that's not a thing. Like, it's not. But I understand why we make it out to be. I do. Um, when you create a few things, you can probably do them really well, right? You're doing one thing really well. If you're in the session before with John Lee Dumas, he's great as a podcaster. He does it insanely well, right? We have entrepreneurs in NextView portfolio that have one product. They're focused on one problem, and we advise that they do that because we think that's the way to do something really, really well. 
And as you start to do more things, the quality will decline. And I think through technology and process and tactics and all this modern stuff we buzz about in these conferences, you can delay a steep drop off, right? So it's a power law, but it's not quite all the way to the bottom, and that's the little plateau you see there. But no matter how much technology you bolt onto your process, no matter how many consultants you bring in, no matter how much time you spend laboring over like, well, our blog's not being read, not because the writing sucks, but it's the SEO and it's all these other things, no matter how much you do that stuff, eventually you still reach this point where the quality just goes through the floor. And I call that moment the crapping point. <laughs> we all reach it at some point. We're being asked to create more stuff. There's more channels. There's more customers to reach. There's more demands from clients, from bosses, from teammates. It's insane. And this idea of quality versus quantity has to stop. So my goal for you is to, today and in the future, laugh in the face of that question. If you talk to a journalist, they have friends in tech media, they have to write multiple blog posts, articles. They don't call it content. They call it stories, articles. They have to write multiple pieces a day and work on longer form, bigger pieces like features and profiles of people all throughout the week, and meet an insanely high quality bar set by the editorial team. So when I say quality versus quantity to them, they're just like, again, uh, both, because it's not a thing. I get fired if I say either or. And so my obsession is this idea of prolific creators. How can we all become prolific creators? You know, and what is it to be prolific in the first place? I think the answer might be a little surprising and a little counterculture to some people in, in the marketing world. I think being prolific is none of these things. It's not creating more stuff. It's not like finishing our work faster, hacking it. And it's also not tapping into some almighty, unspoken panacea of the internet, right? The growth hacking movement, while well-intentioned, I think has spawned this search for some law, some hack, some silver bullet that we want to tap into, and all our problems will be solved, right? I don't buy it. What being prolific is about is it, it's about this. How can we give our audiences what they want quicker, more frequently, more often, and, and be, better, be, with better grammar, <laughs> higher quality? How can we do all that stuff? And what they want, we should zoom in on that word, is not more stuff. They don't want to say how brilliant this blogger is for hacking that article and writing it quicker and delivering me something slightly less than if they spent more time on the craft. That's what this is about, craft. They want quality and a lot of it. They want both. 